Hi there everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This video is going to complete our discussion of Riggle's proposal of awesomeness as a kind of ethical ideal. So we're going to start the video just by reviewing what he means by awesomeness, and then discuss how he tries to relate this to some other terminology and ideas. And then we're going to look at one of those terms in a little bit more detail, this idea of what it is to suck, to be a sucky person, and is that account actually adequate? And we'll look at, is creating a social opening ever actually kind of sucky? And we're going to do this because I think it causes us to see that while there's something good going for his analysis of what it is to be awesome, we might need to do some modifications, some cleaning up in order to get around a couple of issues. And then lastly, this is going to lead us into a discussion of how awesomeness might relate to this idea of excellence and the virtue theory that we looked at developed by Aristotle. Just a brief review, he describes the ethics of awesomeness as being focused on the actions, habits, character traits, values, and principles, in short, the ways of life. So notice how much this sounds already like this idea of a virtue, but he wants to say the character traits, not that make us necessarily virtuous, but that make us awesome and not sucky. He says, if awesomeness is what we're shooting for, then the ideal life we ought to aim for is that of the creative community builder. So he says, when we try to explain the model for living a good life according to this ethics of awesomeness, you can think of it as proposing the ways to be that creative community builder and ways to respond or fail to respond to those kinds of persons. He says the ideally awesome person is in short a virtuoso of communal imagination, imagining culture and community where it doesn't exist and bringing it to life. So there's this creative endeavor of bringing about social community. All right. Putting all this together, we had this idea that being awesome is being good at creating social openings, where these are moments of mutual appreciation between people. So it's not just me doing something that I like, it's appreciating someone else and them appreciating me at a time when we're able to break out of these norms and routines. So instead of just going through the motions, we are able to express our individuality and what makes us different and do so in a way that's going to get others to do the same thing. He goes on to explain that this idea of awesomeness is also related to some other terminology. So awesomeness might be this art or skill of creating social openings, but there's also this idea of the ethics of awesome it talks about how we ought to respond to people being awesome. And that involves something like being down, he says, is a matter of taking up social openings. So when you're given that opportunity, taking advantage of that opportunity to express your individuality in that way. Or being game is similar. He says, this is someone who doesn't just take up these social openings that are offered to them by the awesome person. They're a person that enthusiastically takes up those social openings. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, he says, suckiness or the sucky person is someone who could take up that social opening. They could respond in a way that they engage with it, but they refuse to do so. This is like the person who is invited into Jeremy Fry's celebration at the Celtics game, but refuses and pushes him away. Now, I do want to raise a worry, though, for this account of, of, of sucking or being a sucky person, because I think it fails to appreciate a distinction that we might make between refusing a social opening and actively closing or shutting them down. When I think about that fan, it's not just that they refuse the social opening, but they're trying to actually close that door, so to speak, close that opportunity. For instance, other people in the stadium, they might be sitting down and they might fail to get up. They, they could get up and join in, even if Jimmy Fry doesn't come right next to him and try to pull them in. They're refusing to engage, in a sense. They're not taking up the opportunity. But it looks like this buzzkill that I, as I called him, is doing more than that. They are actively shutting this down as they're being pulled in. They're closing that door, so to speak. And I think that's an important distinction because sometimes we might refuse to take up a social opening because we're tired or we just have other things that we need to get done. We have work we need to get done. That doesn't mean we aren't awesome, that we suck, but it might just mean that it's not the appropriate time. Whereas, whereas the sucky person doesn't just fail to engage with that social opening, it looks like they're doing something to like shut it down. They are more active in denying that social opening. Now, similarly, I want to say sometimes creating social openings isn't 
that awesome. It depends upon the context and the situation. So my first worry with this idea of awesomeness as the skill of creating social openings is sometimes the social opening that someone creates might not itself be good. Or maybe the aspects of individual that it asks them to share with others is not a good aspect of that person. So imagine someone creating social openings for racist or sexist people to express their individuality in the form of their own prejudices, in trying to make a space that's safe and uh, available to express these ideas. That doesn't seem particularly awesome. Now, maybe there's a potential fix to this. Maybe instead of thinking about awesomeness as the ability to create social openings, regardless of what those social openings might be, or regardless of what the individual character that it might be allowing people to express, maybe we should think of as awesomeness as the skill of creating social openings with positive social value. So it looks like the social opening that Jeremy Fry created was a valuable one. It was fun, it was entertaining, uh, it didn't put anybody down, etc. Whereas creating an opening where people feel safe expressing racist or sexist ideas doesn't seem to be a very good opening to create. And that's what makes it not so awesome. Now there's another worry though that I have as well, and that is sometimes even opening a valuable social opening, something that would in most contexts be good, may sometimes close other valuable social opportunities. And that might kind of suck. So my example here is imagine the person who can't help but to always try to one up everyone else. So imagine someone that's like trying to surprise their friend with a really great opportunity to go to a concert or whatever it might be. And then one of their friends finds out, but they don't like not being the center of attention. And so they go out and they buy like backstage passes to a, a different concert to try to one up their friend. And so as their friend's about to surprise everyone else, this person who needs to one up them jumps in, interrupts them, cuts them off and shows this opportunity to go to these backstage passes there. Now it is creating an opportunity and that would be a really great event. And you might think that that would usually be awesome. But in this particular context, that opening is created in such a way that it's also closing all these doors for that other individual to express themselves to their friends in these ways. So you have to be careful because sometimes opening one door might involve shutting other doors. And so maybe a potential fix here is maybe awesomeness is the skill of creating social openings with positive social value that don't also close other potential openings. I think if you wanted to go down this route, you'd probably have to work on this a little bit further because any opening you create is also going to come at the cost of other things you can't do instead. And so there has to be kind of balancing act of, well, how do the openings compare to the maybe opportunities that you close in that way. I think this might also explain why it's not awesome for people to create openings for other people to express racist or sexist behavior because even though it allows those racist or sexist to express their individuality, when someone expresses individuality that involves character traits that are demeaning of others and prejudicial, that opening also thereby closes the door and, and it pushes away other people from those marginalized communities from being able to express their individuality and participate in the community. So even though someone might create openings for these people to express their individuality, the reason it's not awesome is because those openings themselves are essentially involving also closing doors to other people at the same time. So I want you to think about those kinds of things and see, do you have any other of your own ideas for how Regal's attempt to reflect on awesomeness could be developed and improved? Maybe we need a bit more detail than just creating social openings of mutual appreciation. We need to think about the value of that appreciation, the value of that community. And we also need to think about at what cost those openings come at. How could we modify the account of awesomeness to take those kinds of considerations into account? Now, I also want to say a little bit about how to relate this to some of these ideas about virtue, because Riggle suggests that awesomeness is distinct from excellence. And he uses an example of a, a concert or a musical performance. And he says there's a difference between a musical performance being excellent, 
maybe very technically skilled where they play everything perfectly, but maybe the, the concert isn't what you'd call awesome. It doesn't create that sense of community where someone might be less technically skilled, but very good at getting the audience engaged and creating this sense of community. And those are the concerts that you would describe as being just an awesome time, so to speak. I think he's wrong here that we should say that this means that awesomeness is distinct from excellence. An alternative is just that maybe awesomeness is a specific kind of excellence. So the musician who's very good at their instrument, they express musical excellence, but awesomeness, it's a very specific kind. It's an excellence at creating community. And so you can express one kind of excellence without expressing other kinds of excellence. Similarly, I think Riggle's ethics of awesomeness doesn't need to be presented as an alternative to a kind of virtue theoretic approach. Instead, we might be able to see it just as a further development of one part of that theory. Because awesomeness, you could conceive of as itself a virtue. It's a character trait that people have that they develop through their upbringing, through their socialization, and through their habits. They can develop these kinds of character traits where they understand when it's appropriate to create these social opportunities. Now, similarly, you could relate this to this idea of human beings function and fulfilling that function. Now, Aristotle focuses on our function as rational beings, but we're also social beings. And so insofar as we have this social nature, by developing the skill of creating community and valuable social situations with others, we are thereby fulfilling our function as social beings. And similarly, you could even relate this to us fulfilling our function as rational beings because we might use our reason to understand that these social situations are valuable, that they are good, that they are worth promoting, and we might get our motivations to listen to our reason and to maybe get us to overcome some of that maybe feelings of social awkwardness to do and create these experiences that we know in our rational mind are valuable. And so in that way, we can construe this not as an alternative or competing picture with a virtue theoretic approach, but just a proposal that on the virtue theoretic approach, one of those virtues is awesomeness in this form of creating social community and social openings. So that's all for this video. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.